Welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be looking at how to create a machine learning model that can predict the quality of wine from the given data. We will be using different machine learning algorithms such as logistic regression, decision tree and random forest to create a machine learning model and see which model gives the best result. The wine dataset used for this video is taken from the UCI machine learning repository and is also available on Kaggle. I'll post both the links in the description below. Before moving forward, I would highly appreciate if you could take a moment to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on bell notification so that you don't miss any updates. Stay tuned. Now let's head over to Jupyter Notebook. So the first thing to do is to import the required libraries. Okay, so we are importing pandas and numpy for basic data operations. We are importing matplotlib and cbonds for plotting the visualizations. We are importing style from matplotlib to set the style of the plots. We are importing warnings to turn off all the warnings that might appear in our program. We are importing train test split from sklearn to split the data into training and testing sets. Now we are importing confusion metrics, classification report, etc. to get the reports. We are importing standard scalar to scale the data. Then we are importing the logistic regression, decision tree and random forest libraries. Now let's import the data set. Wine data frame and giving it a name wine data frame pd.readchp and separator is semicolon now we can use a head function to see the initial rows of our data set if you want to know more about the pandas library you can check my tutorial series on this topic i'll add a link to it in the description below And this will give the initial rows of our data. So from the head function, we have an idea of a data. Now let's perform some exploratory data analysis. To see the shape of a data set, we can use the shape attribute. Now this gives us a shape of a data set. To see more information about the data set, such as the column names and non-null values, we can use the info method dot info and as we can see we can get the column names and non null count and the data type of our entries now to check for null values explicitly we can use the is null sum function is null dot sum this gives us a sum of all the null values but in this case there are no null values so it returns zero to view the statistical details of a data set, we can use a describe method. Dot describe. Now as we can see, this returns a count, the min, the max, mean, standard deviation of our entries. To get a count of all the values in a quality 
or a target column, we can use the value count method. Give the column name and the value counts. Now this will return a count of all the values in a target column or the column which where you want to see the values. Now let's also visualize this data using a count plot. So we can set the style. And let's plot the count plot using C bonds. Add a frame name. And the column which you want. See the data, which in this case is quality. So this gives a count of the different entries in our target column. Now to see the distribution of the data, we can use a histogram. To do that, we can type in ynDF dot histogram and let's set the bins to 100. And let's set a figure size. So this will give a distribution of the data. Now let's plot a heat map to find the correlation in the data. So to do that we can type in plot dot figure. And let's set the figure size 10 comma 7. We are setting annotation equal to true to see the correlated values inside the heat map. And let's add a title. And let's plot it. So by analyzing this heat map, we can understand that the column alcohol has a highest correlation with our target variable quality and the column volatile acidity has the least correlation with our target column quality. So how do we find, we look at the scale over here and one or the lighter shade indicates a high correlation and the negative value or the darker shades indicate a least correlated value. Now we can also print the correlation values and give the target name and as we can see the columns are arranged in ascending order of correlation. Now from the correlation we can see that the alcohol column has a high correlation with the target column. So let's visualize it using a bar plot. Now from this we can infer that higher the quality of alcohol higher the quality of wine and only the wines which have a quality greater than 6.5 are considered as good wines. Now let's do some data processing on a data. Let's start by binarizing the target column into 0 and 1 as the wines with quality greater than 6.5 are considered as good wines and the wines with quality less than 6.5 are considered as bad wines. So to do this we can binarize our target column. Now what this will do is it will search for values in quality column and then it will convert all the values greater than or equal to 7 to 1 and the values less than 7 to 0. Now let's use a value count to see the binary columns. Now 
Now as we can see, our target column has been binarized. Now let's split the data into x and y. For x data, we are dropping the target column. Axis equal to 1 to imply it's a column being dropped. Now let's create the training and testing data and I'm setting the test size as 30 percentage. Train test split and let's input the data x comma y and test size is 0 0.3 which implies the 30 percentage of the data is set aside for testing and let's specify a random state setting a random set of 42 now let's see the shape of a training and testing set now let's see the shape of a train and test set So now we get the shape of the training and testing sets. Now let's perform model training. Let's first train the data on the logistic regression model. So let's load the logistic regression model. Now let's fit the data. X train and Y train. Now let's predict the values. Predict the values for the given X test data. And then let's calculate the accuracy. Accuracy score. And let's print the accuracy. Let's set it to two decimal formats. Percentage. Dot format log accuracy to one hundred. So we find that from a logistic regression model, we get an eighty six point six nine percentage accuracy. Now let's print the classification report. Classification report of the actual test values y test and the predicted values and as we can see we have a classification report now let's plot the confusion matrix i'm changing the style confusion matrix equal to confusion matrix of the actual value y test and the predicted value logarithmic predicted and the labels will be the class labels so logarithm classes now let's display the confusion matrix Play dot plot and let's also print out the true positive false positive true negative and false positive values so print true negative confusion matrix zero
and let's plot it and here we get the TPFP values and we also get the confusion matrix now let's build a decision tree model so let's initialize decision tree classifier we are loading the model and then we are fitting the data x train and y train then we are predicting the values for the given test set and now let's calculate the accuracy for decision tree accuracy score of the predicted value and actual value and let's print it and we get an accuracy of 86.25 for decision tree classifier now let's print the classification report so y test and decision tree decision tree predict now we can see that the logistic regression model and decision tree almost give the same result now let's plot the confusion matrix as well so classic and now we have the confusion matrix for decision tree let's similarly create a model for the random forest Let's first load the classifier. Now let's fit the data. Now let's predict the value. Now let's calculate the accuracy. Accuracy score of predicted value and test value. And let's print the accuracy score. accuracy into 100 percentage and we get an accuracy of 88.75 now let's print the classification report random forest prediction and we have the classification report let's print the confusion matrix Red is replaced by random forest prediction. Decision tree is replaced by random forest. Random forest confirmation. And there we have the classification matrix for a random forest. 
Now when comparing the three models, we can find that the random forest has a better accuracy when compared to the other two models. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an understanding of implementing different machine learning algorithms on a given dataset. Don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you found it useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.